This is a practice demonstration for CRM Idle. And I'm going to start this demonstration with uh, just a couple of slides, so please bear with me. Hello, my name is Paul Roney, and I'm the founder of Splendid CRM Software. I've been developing software for 25 years, and uh, Splendid CRM was created in 2005, roughly seven years ago. We're still a small organization, but after you watch this demo, I think you'll see that uh, being small has not hampered our ability in any way. We've created a, a truly excellent product, and I think you'll see that. Uh, Splendid Serum is an enterprise CRM. Uh, we cover all the bases from Salesforce automation to call center. We target the small business. Uh, that's, that's our sweet spot. And we offer both SaaS and an on-premise product. We focus on the Microsoft technologies. We're developed in uh, C Sharp and use ASP.NET. Uh, our primary database is Microsoft SQL Server, but we also support Oracle and DB2. But most of our customers use SQL Server. We run on just about all versions of Windows. And uh, we integrate some of the key Microsoft technologies, such as uh, Exchange Server. We, uh, we have an Outlook plugin. We have a Word plugin. Uh, we work with Microsoft's Report Builder, that's a key aspect of our reporting system. And coming soon is a, is a link uh, uh, add-in. We have over 100 customers, and they range from the small 5-user instance to the much larger 250-user instance. We have 15 partners uh, pretty evenly spread out around the world. Um, that's good, of course, for them because they're not stepping on each other's toes. Some of the key attributes of our customers, they run Windows. That's the point. They run Windows. And they want the source code. Uh, that's primarily because they're migrating from an internally built system to something more off the shelf that will give them a lot more uh, uh, features. Um, and one of the things they're looking for is something that fits their development cycle, something that is easy to learn, you know, using the same best practices that they've been following for the last 10 years. So Splendid Serum fits that bill. Uh, we have a free product. We have a, a, it's been released under the AGPL license. But uh, our, our two main products are the Professional and Enterprise Edition. The Professional has some, some core business features, such as a reporting system, order management. And we include some of our, our add-ins. Uh, and that is $300 per user for our on-premise product. Uh, our most popular product is the Enterprise Edition at $480 per user for our on-premise product. Um, we price things based on sort of that traditional software approach where you have an upfront fee plus uh, uh, yearly maintenance. We include uh, maintenance in the first year, so the first 12 months are free, but after that our maintenance is an optional 25% and optional is important because we don't like forcing our customers to do anything. Uh, and so when you when you look at the pricing of Splendid Serum versus its you know major competitors, you see a real stark difference in that third year. In three years, Splendid Serum is one-third the price of Sugar Serum. One-third. And, and we're comparing on-premise to on-premise product, so one-third the price. Uh, when you compare against Salesforce, we are one-sixth the price. Salesforce is a very expensive product, and the fact that it's SaaS isn't really a, a, the, the main difference. It's just an expensive product because they're a big company and they have a lot of employees that they have to pay the salary for. Uh, we're a small company, so we, we can charge less and do the same things. Uh, I, I've put uh, Microsoft Dynamics in there, although we really don't compete that much uh, with Microsoft Dynamics. Our customers uh, uh, just don't even really consider Dynamics. It's a big product. It's complicated, uh, and even their pricing is complicated, which is why I have an estimate uh, on the pricing here and not an actual price. Uh, so I'm going to jump into the product now for the live demonstration. And one of the first things you're going to notice is that I didn't have to log in. And that's one of the big, big advantages of being integrated with Windows, is that we get to take advantage of that single sign-on that Microsoft offers. Um, so it already detected who I am, it already logged me in, and I'm ready to go. Uh, and so that's a, that's a huge time saver. Uh, not, you know, it's it's just one less system that you have to remember. Now, we do support the more, more traditional uh, method of of, of a username login prompt, and that's that's fine too. It, it it's all a matter of allowing the customer choose their 
preferred method of authentication. Um, the other thing you're going to notice here is that we, we, we follow the industry of regarding look and feel. You know, we, we, our, our user interface is current. Uh, we're displaying our Atlantic theme here. And uh, we have, you know, right at the top our, our, our key uh, modules, accounts, contacts, uh, quotes, and whatnot. And uh, this main screen uh, uh, for accounts, we have searching. And I think searching is one of the things that we do very well. Uh, and, and let me just give you a real quick example. Let's say we're going to search for phone numbers in the 415 area code. And so our default search is what we call a contain search, a, a number that contains 415. So we get uh, our phone numbers in, in California, but we also got this one in Utah. And what we can do, though, is we can say, well, we only want phone numbers that start with 415. Okay, but not all phone numbers are formatted the same, so we lost a couple of California ones. So, well, let's add them back. And we use some Boolean logic in our text searching. So we want to add back the phone numbers that include 415. So there we go. So now we're able to to uh, use searching and use some Boolean logic to help refine our search and really gather the set of data that we might want to operate on. Um, let, let's let's try it a little bit differently. Let's go over to the state and we're going to search for uh, companies in Virginia or Maryland or Pennsylvania, right? Because you you know companies tend to deal with their their customers on a regional basis. And so what we can do here, we've, we've selected uh, our data and now we can real quickly uh, decide that we want to add these guys to our global team. So now we're going to update them. And, and now they're part of the global team. In this case I actually replaced the team, but I could have I added We'll add team, so we can do some 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 really quick things down there. But uh, another thing that we can do is mail merge, right? Because we we we're using Microsoft's Word to help us do the mail merge. So we've already uploaded a document that is a mail merge template generated in Microsoft Word, and now we can take our data that we've just selected and generate a merge document from that. Real quick, real easy. Here we go. Here's the data. Here's the different uh, uh, letters. So we've integrated with Microsoft Word for something like Mail Merge that just makes it really easy to uh, either construct the Mail Merge document, uh, real easy to insert fields from say the accounts module for example, um, we're real easy to upload this merged document into the CRM. So, so we, we have this add-in for Word that just makes uh, mail merge a breeze. So I'm going to close that back out, get back to our list of accounts. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show here is that we have a really powerful rules wizard. So let's get back to uh, the entire list where we see phone numbers that aren't really following a consistent format. So I'm going to jump over to the rules wizard and I'm going to take a quick shortcut here and get to a rules wizard that I've already created. And what a rule allows you to do is provide a little bit of logic, provide an operation on a data set because in this scenario what we want to do is we want to format the office phone in this case, if it meets this criteria, if it's if it's a U.S. phone number, we want to format it to have a consistent uh, look, a consistent format to it. So here's our normal list uh, of accounts. So so we're, we're we're showing the list of accounts that we're going to update. And notice that some of our phone numbers have parentheses, some do not. Uh, so now we're going to apply the rule. And here I'm just going to preview them. I'm not going to submit them yet. But real quickly, so we pre and and here we go. We formatted all of the phone numbers. They all have the parentheses around the area code. That's that's my personal preference. That's the way I like it. 
uh, to me it's more visually easier to see. So here we have the ability to put a little put a little logic on a data set. That's an incredibly powerful feature. Uh, the other thing we have is the ability to take that the, the that rules and and this was a preview so I'm going to effectively throw away those changes. We can go to the account and we've already established in the administrative area that maybe what we want is instead of applying it as a rule maybe we we'll want to apply it as a as a business rule in the user interface so anytime a customer or excuse me anytime an end user saves an account it's going to attempt to format that uh, that phone number in its correct way so here's a, a record that doesn't have the phone number in the expected format and when I hit save it's going to apply a business rule and correct all the phone numbers and so that can be done really without any programming. I mean, yes, there's a little bit of logic in defining what the rule is, but technically there's no programming. There's no recompiling. You can just do this. It becomes an administrative function. So that, that business rule engine is incredibly powerful, and, and uh, it also comes from uh, some libraries that Microsoft provides. Again, we're integrating with all things Microsoft. Uh, let's go back to the edit of the account. I wanted to highlight a couple of things. Here we have teams, and this is one of our enterprise features. And we allow you to assign multiple teams to a single uh, uh, record. In this case, and, and we call that our, our dynamic teams, and it's for, for bigger companies. So I could just add another team to that. Uh, we also have the ability to apply field level security so so based on the user that you've logged in under you may or may not have access to uh, the sick code or something so you, you you from an administrative perspective you can control what you see control what your end users see now this is a this is a typical detail view uh, in the system be it accounts be it contacts and uh, I, I think it's pretty common pretty typical across uh, all CRMs and on the market today. Here you're you're looking at the details of your account, and you can very quickly schedule a meeting, or add an account, uh, add, add a contact. Uh, just very quickly add things that are related to the account. Uh, so now I'm going to jump over to contacts because what I want to do is highlight the ability to import data, and I'm going to combine that with a little bit of social media because social media is all the rage. Uh, one of the th things we did recently is we just sent out a mass email to our customers and say, how do you want to use LinkedIn? What do you want to do with Twitter? How do you want to integrate your CRM to these social media sites? And uh, uh, they, they actually came back with just some very simple requests. And that was, that was just simply, how do we import the data from LinkedIn into the CRM? So here we are, we're, we're in a contact, and we're able to connect to LinkedIn, and I've already authenticated with LinkedIn to save ourselves a few seconds here. So it's going to LinkedIn and it's getting the list of, uh, of connections within LinkedIn. And I can preview that and, uh, and I can import that data. Now let's go back. Let's do it with Twitter. So maybe you want to import your followers. And we can preview that. Let's go back. Um, one of our customers wanted to import an entire ACT database because they were they were migrating 100 uh, separate ACT databases for their 100 uh, users, and they wanted to bring them all into a single CRM. So we have the ability to import an entire ACT database, and it does it does accounts, contacts, notes, phone numbers, everything. Uh, very cool feature again driven by our customer request um, we, we can import with Facebook we can import data from salesforce.com and with salesforce.com we're not just expecting you to do an export to CSV and then import it yes we can do that but what we do today with importing from Salesforce is, is it's an actual contact of the Salesforce API so we're going server to server on the import for Salesforce. One of our newest features, this was released in the last uh, couple of months, is the ability to connect to QuickBooks. 
because again we're dealing with small businesses and a fair number of our customers use QuickBooks as their accounting system so it's only natural to be able to uh, import data from QuickBooks or even synchronize with QuickBooks uh, but now staying focused on contacts we can synchronize with you know, the, the, the cloud platforms out there. We can synchronize with Microsoft Exchange. We can synchronize with Google Apps. And we can synchronize with the iCloud. So I'm going to just jump over there. Again, I've already trying to you know, not bore you with some of the nitty gritty details. I've already logged into iCloud and I'm showing you the, the, the names that we have chosen to synchronize with iCloud. And so here we go, and, and what's, a, what's significant here is by synchronizing with the Apple iCloud, it makes it very easy for our users to get that data onto their iPhone. We, didn't, we don't need to create a separate iPhone application in order for you to synchronize your contacts with the CRM. We just use iCloud as that, that middleman and that's what uh, Apple has developed it for so so it's one so we synchronize contacts and we also synchronize the calendar so here's our calendar this this CRM idle demo that we have down here that's being synchronized from the CRM uh, let's jump over to Google same thing with Google we're synchronizing with the contacts within Google Apps and uh, are we also synchronizing with the calendar in Google Apps. As I mentioned before, we have an Outlook plugin, same thing, synchronizing contacts with and the calendar, and we're synchronizing that with the CRM. Uh, and lastly, I have Microsoft Exchange here. I'm demonstrating it uh, through the, uh, the uh, Outlook Web Access. So here we are, the contacts that we're synchronizing with, and uh, we can quickly show the calendar same thing with a calendar, synchronizing calendar events. But our, our exchange synchronization goes a little bit further. Uh, because what we wanted is we wanted it we wanted to make it easier for you to archive emails from your exchange installation to the CRM. Now we have the Outlook plugin and that works fine. Uh, but for those customers that have Exchange Server as the back end system. Uh, we create drop folders so you can just simply grab an email that you just received and drop it into the appropriate place within the CRM. If you drop it into the accounts folder it'll create an account or attach to the account that already exists. If you drop it in bugs it'll create a bug or attach to uh, an existing bug. Uh, if you drop it into a, a specific contact it's gonna archive the email and then associated with that specific contact and that's an incredibly uh, powerful feature it just really makes thing makes it really easy for our users to organize the emails that are coming in now we have various ways of bringing emails into the system but this one we like the best because you get the end user to apply a little bit of appropriate logic to say where does this email go and so in just a few quick seconds they're able to associate the email with its correct contact and that's again it's about increasing productivity um, so now I'm gonna jump back to the CRM and one of the things I mentioned before was our newest feature of synchronizing with QuickBooks and so you probably didn't notice but a lot of the accounts that were in here actually came from uh, the QuickBooks sample file but we've also been able to synchronize quotes so these quotes are coming from QuickBooks and invoices they're coming from QuickBooks and so I'm gonna jump over to the admin area 
just just briefly just briefly to show you a little bit of admin stuff uh, here's where we're configuring the synchronization with QuickBooks and we can set our direction do we want to import from QuickBooks do we want to send to QuickBooks or do we want it to be bi-directional uh, so we get to decide how we want our synchronization to work uh, this is a, a configuration screen and status as well uh, while we're in the admin area, let's let's show just a, a few other you know, useful admin things. We can import language packs, various language packs, because our, our product is used around the world. So being able to uh, support the various uh, languages out there is important. And, and we see here we have 54 languages that we've supported, and and we we used Google's translation engine to create most of these language packs. But the other thing that we, we allow is we allow you to import a Sugar CRM language pack. And uh, that's just one of the benefits of following Sugar CRM so closely is that their language pack can easily apply and you just get it from them and upload it and you're done. Uh, real quick and easy. Um, in the admin area, we, we, we uh, support custom fields. Uh, real quickly, we in this particular example here, we we have a billing frequency custom field that we've created to uh, help manage uh, monthly billing. So the CRM itself can automatically bill your customer and even charge through the credit card. And so it, it just it's just part of our order management system, part of our enterprise feature to help you to automatically bill customer and do that reoccurring billing. Um, we have a layout uh, engine so you can change the fields and we we do recommend that our our users one of the first things that they do when they get the CRM is simplify it, remove fields that don't apply and uh, so we have a, a online system to allow you to do that I think it's worth noting the way that we've designed the system our data is coming out of the database we, we're, we're a data driven system now it's a technical term and I don't want to get too technical here but the big benefit is that when you go to apply an upgrade or apply an update to the system since the layout data is stored in the database the upgrade goes very smoothly because data during an upgrade isn't modified it's it's retained the whole logic is retained so by creating a data driven system we make upgrades so much easier we make a more reliable system okay now I'm gonna jump over to reports because that reporting is another critical feature for just about every company that uh, uh, adopts a CRM and we have a, we have a bunch of standard reports here and I'm just gonna jump into a couple of them really quickly uh, we our reporting system is based on Microsoft's report definition language it's something they defined many years ago and it's just a, it, it's, it's a wonderful format for defining what the report is and because we do that we can do some really wonderful things in this case we're displaying a a graph on top of a tabular data set so we have one report containing two bits of information it says we can we can do more we can put two or three graphs in one report not a problem uh, and again that's that's because we are taking advantage of what Microsoft has offered I jump into another one real quick <coughs> another bar graph here let's go back to reports now let's look at a more complex report in this case uh, opportunities by sales stage and this is a this this report really shows some of the wonderful things that we can do here. So we're we, we've got some summation. So we got these groups that uh, of data that we're summing up the data on. Uh, we have the list of of data. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to Microsoft's editor by using Microsoft's report definition language we are able to use Microsoft's own report designer and that is just an incredibly powerful feature because you get to do some really really wonderful stuff uh, one of our customers had um, 
had some complex uh, order um, and, and invoicing needs, and they, they just had a certain format they wanted the order to be printed under, uh, printed on as a PDF, and the fact that they could go in and really control the what you see and how you see it made that solution possible. And here's a good example: this is we're able to take the 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 complex logic and embed it in the report. And in this case, we're, we're formatting the text string, giving the information, so that it's, it's hard to express how important that is. Uh, we can also do some simple things. Is let's, um, let's change, say, the, the, the background color. I mean, it's, it's simple, but the point is it can be done. And that's what makes it powerful. We can change it gray. We could even make a condition. If, it, if it's greater than a certain amount, it becomes a certain color to, to highlight it a certain way. We can change the way the date format is, uh, is, is used. So we're going to go to the number, date format. In this case, we have a, a condensed format. But if we wanted to make it uh, the full date, we could do that. And again, these are things that are coming out of what Microsoft has to offer. Now the other thing we've done is we've integrated it such that you can do a save as and have this report go directly into the CRM. So, so <clears throat> we've integrated that that feature so here I am selecting the CRM to say, well, where do I want it to go? I want you to be saved into the CRM. So I'm not saving onto a file and then importing it later. I'm saving it directly into the CRM. And that it's just a matter of increasing productivity here. It says we're, you wanted to edit a report. And yes, we want to overwrite the existing item. So there we go. Now it's saved to the CRM. So now let's run the report again. And what you see is our background color has changed, and our date format has changed. So I'm, just, I'm giving you relatively simple examples, uh, but the point is that you have an incredible amount of power there because we're leveraging all this technology Microsoft has developed over the last 10 years regarding reporting. OK, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And I showed you the Outlook plugin. Right, you saw that, and we're synchronizing contacts and calendars. Uh, but the Outlook plugin is also used to to import emails into uh, the system. We we would right click and say archive that email to the CRM. One of our customers was moving from Lotus Notes to Gmail, and they really didn't want to go through the to the effort of installing the Outlook and the Outlook plugin on all of their 100 or so uh, users. So what they asked us to do is ask if, if we, can we do something within Gmail. And what we ended up doing, which is which is very cool, what we ended up doing is creating an extension to the web browser to the Chrome web browser. So here we are. We're selecting an email, and in the upper right we have this little uh, CRM extension button. And what we've done here is we've said, hey, let's let's uh, grab the data from Gmail, grab the raw email, so here's our email, and before we just send that to the CRM, right, we have the ability to search the CRM to see what or where we want to put it. In this case, our default search finds that we have a, an existing contact. We can assign that relationship. We can go over to accounts and uh, apply it to any one of these other accounts. And so we've, we've created that same sort of ability uh, to, number one, synchronize with, with uh, Google Apps, but also archive emails very easily. Now, there are many ways of getting an email into the CRM. But this one uh, is rather cool, because what, part of what we're doing here is we're leveraging uh, what, what's being touted as HTML5. It's the new way of creating websites and just offers a, a bunch more capabilities. And one of the things, and so so we started by creating this thing for our customer, but then we sort of transitioned. We said, "Hey, this is this is really cool. How else can we leverage it?" We were at the time we were working on 
uh, separate applications for the Android, uh, uh, an, a native Android app. We were working on another application for the uh, Apple iPhone, and we were creating separate applications. But after we did this extension, we said, that what if, instead of creating native apps, what if we leveraged this HTML5 to create an iPad application? So what I'm going to do here is connect to a simulator so what I have here is a is, is an iPad simulator it's actually running on an Apple uh, uh, Apple laptop so this is a simulator so I, you know it's kind of hard to show you what happens on an iPad uh, so we're, we're taking this simulator approach and you know it, what you see here is is one of our, our, our training sites. But what I want to focus on is this new thing that we've added, HTML5 Offline Client. So instead of creating native apps for all the major phones, for Windows Phone, for BlackBerry, there are just plenty of different hardware uh, phones out there. And instead of creating native apps, what we decided to do, and I think we're ahead of the curve on this, we created a, an HTML5 approach. So it's really it's really what we do best is creating a website but we have get the best of both worlds where we are able to provide that let me log in we're able to provide that offline experience that a native app is intended to provide now here what you're seeing is it looks just like the CRM and that's the whole point right that is precisely the point but the difference is that if there's no networking, you still have your data. Okay, and so again, we have a Windows offline client, but this new HTML5 is a way of ha providing an offline client to the iPad, the Kindle, the, the Android, uh, to whatever device you have that supports HTML5, which most of them do today. We, we get this wonderful ability and we don't have to write native apps, which means that we're more productive, which means that we, ha we can produce the same feature and effectively charge you less. Anyway, well, that's, uh, that's the demo for today. Um, and uh, we're ready for questions. Uh, all right, and good day then.